Hey everyone, Eber here with Hurricane X, and today Intel is launching their new 7th generation core series codenamed KB Lake, and this is it. Um, not only are these new processors supposed to offer higher performance than the Skylake series, uh, but you can also expect new motherboards, updated features, and a whole lot of things. This video is meant to be just the tip of a very large iceberg. In it, I'll get into what KB Lake is, how its platform differs from Skylake, and the performance of the i7-7700K and the i5-7600K against a ton of other processors. As you're watching this, I'm on my way to meet Dimitri for our annual CES coverage, so stay tuned for more KB Lake content at the show and in the near future. So, without any further ado, Let's take a look at Intel's newest processors. In its most basic form, KB Lake is simply a refresh of Skylake with higher frequencies and a few additional features on the platform side. You see, Intel is currently stuck in their 14mm manufacturing process and won't be moving beyond it for a little while. So KB Lake is meant to increase performance over its predecessor without consuming more power. Basically, it isn't meant as an upgrade for Skylake, Broadwell, or even Haswell users. Rather, these new processors and their accompanying motherboards should appeal to people who still have setups from the Sandy Bridge generation or before. If we focus for a moment on the slightly higher end KB Lake processors, you can see that there's a 200 megahertz to 300 megahertz increase in raw based boost clocks over the previous generation. KB Lake's pricing also stays aligned with Skylake, but there are a few moves to very slightly lower cost brackets. I'd expect this to change as AMD's intent for Ryzen becomes clearer and Intel adapts their strategies accordingly. At least in the higher range, Intel is replacing their Skylake processors on a one-to-one -one basis with the 7000 series parts. Like I said earlier, for the purposes of this review, I'll be testing the 7700K and 7600K, two processors that are unlocked for better overclocking and find a home in the higher end of Intel's new lineup. Uh, like the 6700K, the 7700K has four logical cores and eight threads, whereas the 7600K has four cores and threads, but commands at a lower price. Moving a bit further down market, and this is where I think Intel's new lineup really comes on its own. As we've seen in the past, the more affordable i5 and i3 options actually provide some great bang for buck performance while giving gaming frame rates that are extremely close to high-end CPUs. Even here, there are some incremental 200 MHz clock speed improvements when moving to KB Lake and the dual-core quad-thread i3 series processors still lack a turbo mode. The most interesting KB Lake processor is the i3-7350K since it only costs $170 but it's unlocked for overclocking and still offers four processing threads. It will be released into retail channels in late January or early February, and I can see this thing pairing perfectly with a compact ITX system. With every new processor launch, Intel always updates their chipsets and rolls out either a new or revised platform. This time around, Z170 is being replaced by a revised and slightly updated Z270 platform. Much like the KB Lake processors themselves, the amount of changes are minimal, but there's one significant update. The new Z270 motherboards like this ASRock Vitality Z270 Gaming K6 are compatible with Intel's upcoming Optane. Optane uses a combination of non-volatile memory and PCIe storage standards alongside 3D X-Point technology to significantly boost system performance. In many ways, Optane can be compared to Intel's Smart Response SSD caching technology, but it will achieve its goals faster and with more security. In order to better support Optane and other next-generation storage standards, the Z270 PCH has four additional PCIe 3.0 lanes. I'll be covering Optane a bit later this year, so stay tuned for that. Even though there hasn't been much done to the Z270 chipset to differentiate it from Z170, ASRock and other motherboard manufacturers are launching some pretty interesting products. In the case of this gaming K6, it may cost less than $200, but it features onboard diagnostic LEDs and power arrest switches. There's also plenty of space for aftermarket cooling installation with a 12-phase digital power delivery system. It has USB 3.1 Type-A and Type-C ports on the very complete rear I.O. and four DDR4 slots rated at 3866 its operation. Incredible stuff. Compared to the original gaming K6, this generation adds an opt-in supporting M.2 slot as an add-on, a third M.2 slot dedicated for a Wi-Fi Bluetooth module, dual Intel LAN modules, and a Creative Sound Blaster Cinema 3 audio controller. Other than a few connectivity improvements, ASRock has really gone to town with other add-ons. There's now full RGB LED control alongside a dedicated LED header. They bundle in a higher bandwidth SLI bridge. It has steel reinforced PCIe X16 slots and a dedicated water pump header. Expect many other Z270 motherboards to offer similar features at very competitive prices. But enough about these motherboards and let's get to the benchmarks 
for these new processors. As you can see, we tried to equalize the test systems as much as possible with all the memory, GPUs, etc. running at the same speed. Note that older video drivers were used since this allowed us to standardize testing procedures across multiple CPU generations. So let's get on this and start with the basic synthetic benchmarks. As you can see in these tests, the Kaby Lake processors do offer some benefits over their predecessors, particularly in single threaded applications. However, this really won't be enough to justify anyone upgrading from Haswell processor or later generations. Honestly, if you were expecting something around breaking over the last generation of CPU, Cable Lake won't be it, and if you want massive parallel workload capability, look towards Broadwell E. Cable Lake is good, but it isn't a miracle worker since it still uses a 14 nanometer manufacturing process. Our real world benchmarks show that both the i7 7700K and i5 7600K are awesome performers in their own rights, but there are certainly better paths if you need massive multi threaded performance. But from a price to performance standpoint, I really like both of these in their respective price brackets. Uh, they really do have excellent results in every single test, especially the ones that don't rely completely upon the processor. In order to test how these processors compare against one another with the GPU partially taken out of the equation, we set up the system to run at a lower 720p resolution. While it might not be realistic for most gamers to run this, it should help differentiate one CPU from another. We intend to do more game testing in the weeks after CES to give you a better idea how these processors perform with a newer graphics card. As you can see in these charts, the number of games that actually take advantage of more than four cores is minimal at most. That means the extremely high-end processors from Intel's Broadwell E lineup are either tied or trailing the 7700K in many games. The same goes for the 4-thread 7600K. Its performance is very, very good given its lower price. Moving on to 1080p and we see the results becoming even tighter as the CPU's performance takes a backseat to how much data the graphics card can process. Here, frequencies tend to mean less for frame rates and all for the newer Intel processors perform very close to one another. With that being said, KB Lake CPUs are right near the top of the charts, which is great to see. Now onto power consumption. What everyone is seeing here shouldn't be a shock. Power consumption has remained extremely consistent from one generation to the next in Intel's lineup, but the clock speeds have been able to increase dramatically. That means performance per watt is at an all-time high. Do note, however, that some parts feature higher power consumption than others, so the numbers here may vary widely from one chip to another. But when you're buying a processor like one of these, overclocking headroom is likely more important to you than overall power consumption, and both of these chips were able to get some pretty good results. After only a small amount of time with each, we were easily able to hit just to over 5 GHz. Uh, for the 7600K, which normally runs at 4.2 GHz, an additional 900 MHz with simply a multiplier change and voltage increase is quite impressive and will net you some very good performance increases. Moving on to the 7700K, and I was a bit less impressed with it since the final clock speed was also just north of 5.1 GHz. But you also can't forget that this CPU starts out life running at 4.5 GHz in turbo mode. Over on the site, our team will be trying to push these chips even further, which will take some time, but it shouldn't be too hard. KB Lake includes new B clock and voltage controls, which are meant to improve stability. With those in action, high frequencies are certainly possible. Uh, it should be interesting to see what happens as time goes on and professional overclockers are able to get their hands on these new processors. So let's sum it up. KB Lake may not offer all that much additional performance over Skylake, but it is a great step forward for a simple refresh. The new processors are no more expensive than predecessors, they don't consume more power, and the Z270 platform seems to be a solid foundation which you can build a great system around. Users of Haswell and Skylake processors won't find anything hugely beneficial by moving to KB Lake unless they absolutely want support for Optane. However, the Z270 motherboards themselves will offer a massive connectivity upgrade for people who are still rocking Ivy Bridge and earlier processors. Not only will they now have access to KB Lake's much improved performance, but they will also get features like USB 3.1, Optane, DDR4 memory, M.2 storage, better rate support, and many other things. So to sum that up, if you bought your CPU in the last three years, hang on to it for a little while longer since KB Lake won't offer you much. However, KB Lake does provide a great upgrade path for slightly older systems. So what system are you guys rocking right now? Uh, are you looking at KB Lake as an upgrade? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.